So it's about 11.30 and I'm going to go to bed. And when I wake up, I'm going to attempt to learn 1,000 words in Spanish in a single day. So I'll see you in the morning. So I know you're probably thinking that this is ridiculous, that you'd never be able to learn even 100 words in a day, let alone a thousand. But what I like to do is take something that I think is impossible and then test whether it really is. And if so, where is the line? What is the limit? So when my family was going to be out for a whole day and I'd just recently taken up Spanish, I decided to see what would happen if I took an Anki deck of the 1000 most relevant Spanish words and gave the entire day to learning them. Would you even have time? That was the first thing that I wasn't sure about. Like sure, you could look at 1000 words in one day, but the way Anki works is that when you fail a card, it shows that card to you again very soon. And then if you fail it again, it shows it to you again equally soon. But if you pass it, it waits a little while. And I don't know whether you would even have time to look at 1000 words and grade them that way within the space of a single day. I've never tried before. I've never really spent more than maybe just under one hour in a single day on Anki. And I think from memory, what might have been due that day, that is how many reps do you have to do before you can kind of clear your Anki for that day, might have been like 80 or 90. So even just 1000 cards of any sort, I figured that's going to take all day, but 1,000 new cards, I don't know that it's possible. This experiment went a bit differently to how I pictured it going, so before I get to some of the surprises that were waiting for me on that fateful day, let's first deal with the how. I figured that something like this would only be even close to achievable towards the beginning of learning a language, and when I started learning Spanish about three weeks before doing this, I was already completely aware of the Refold ES1K, that is a curated high quality collection of 1000 flashcards designed specifically for English speakers who are relatively new to learning Spanish. So put simply, that is the how, and yes I will cover how many of these words should count to my total for the day, plus something that I had planned for the end of the day to sneak some more words in there, and then find Finally, how many I think I actually learned. By the way, the refold decks are a goldmine for anyone who's like beginner up to even intermediate in Japanese, Korean, German, French, and Spanish. Now this video is not sponsored by Refold, but I will put links in the description for those flashcard decks. They're $19. In my opinion, that's $19. Very well spent. They are affiliate links. They'll be there if you want to use them. But despite knowing of the existence of this deck, as well as how much of a boost it would be able to give my Spanish, I didn't get straight onto the deck, and it's understandable that you might ask why. No good reason, really. I, I just sort of don't like opening Anki for the day. I don't like starting it. I like doing it. I have no problem once I'm like two or three minutes in. So when you're talking about a brand new deck of 1000 cards and on Refold's recommendation, which is, by the way, completely reasonable of doing 10 new cards a day, I don't kind of vomit at the thought of it. I just think, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I feel like with certain activities in life, vocabulary learning is definitely one of them. I'm a bit of a hostile negotiator. Like you can imagine Spanish saying, look, just learn 10 words a day for the next 100 days. You can do that, right? And I'm kind of like, nah, all at once, all one day. At this point, I should quickly mention some technical details. When I did this, I had already been learning Spanish, even if for a short time, so there were obviously words in the deck that I already knew, but I had only had the chance to do one sit-down session of Spanish, that is where I actually study the language in some sort of deliberate sense, which was with the Total Beginner Story Learning course. The rest of the time, I'd just been watching shows and movies, so I was surprised by how many of the first 200 cards I just knew automatically. But the Refold decks also have example sentences for every word, 
with native audio, so there were often other words in the sentence that I was still kind of unfamiliar with or perhaps had never heard at all. Note also that the sample sentences often use words from slightly later or earlier in the deck, so most of the words from the deck will come up in two or three different contexts. The other purpose that the cards which I already knew served was to do with the fact that, as is the case with many languages, the most common verbs are often totally transformed when they're conjugated. Seeing all the different forms of irregular verbs in the one place helped me to piece together what had seemed to me to be three or four different words. And just a quick disclaimer, even now after doing the deck and another month of learning Spanish, no I'm not claiming to know all the correct conjugations of every tense of common verbs. Complex and colourful verb tenses are one of Spanish's more infamous traits, so yeah, that might be a while yet. Moving on to another detail that you may be wondering about, what about the thousands of words that are super obvious? Am I claiming, for example, that I've learned the Spanish word for Mexico? No, I'm not, because one of the many beautiful things about the Refold decks is that they have cognates and mascot words removed. I was part of the team that carried this out with the French deck, and that gave me a bird's eye view of just how deep into real vocabulary you can get with 1,000 words, so long as those words are hand-picked for people who already speak a given language, in this case English. For example, if you search the deck for amigo, tranquilo, or casa, you won't find them except in example sentences. ¿Por qué? Because they're mascot words. Mascot words are those words which have made their way into another language as a representation of the original language. Words like that are used in English to represent Spanish often enough that English speakers don't need to learn them. Welcome to mi casa! That's French for front door. It's really... Not. The same goes for cognates like musica, automatico, etc. So for the people who are, rightly, wondering how many words would even be new to me given that I have studied French before, the answer is still most of them, because the majority of cognates between Spanish and English are there via French. Remove them and suddenly the advantage that having studied French would normally give me is largely neutralized. As a point of trivia, there is the occasional endemic cognate between Spanish and Swedish. Cifra, that'll be like a number or something to do with a number, a digits or counting or something. ¿Me podría dar una cifra aproximada? Now the main reason I'm doing this is what I call the one hit wonder rule. I went through a very, very brief period of making physical flashcards for Swedish. It was when I could already read a proper novel and understand what was going on, but I was still seeing lots of words that I didn't know and would never figure out from context. But I never actually got to review these flashcards, I made them well over two years ago and just never looked at them again. What's weird is, when I go back through them today, I know all of them. Like, there's maybe one here that I I was a bit unsure of, but most of them I know very certainly and I can't really remember a time of not knowing that word and I also can't remember learning that word. And I get that the obvious takeaway there would be yes, learning Swedish for two more years does improve your vocabulary in Swedish. But I'm not sure that I ever would have actually picked these words up via immersion had I have not had this one deliberate interaction with them. That's why I call it the one hit wonder rule because although we obviously forget things all the time, we also kind of remember everything that's ever happened, like on some subconscious level, everything that's ever happened to you is there in the recesses of your mind. Any word that I saw that day and marked unknown, which was obviously most of them, I had to see at least three more times that day, but most of them I actually saw multiple times throughout the deck in various contexts and whatever. You've also got the example sentences. So as a total, I'm hearing most of the words more like 11 or 12 times. So none of the words that is found in that deck, not one of them, is new to me anymore. I may not be able to tell you what it means, I may not be able to give you a good English translation of it, I certainly can't use most of them in sentences in Spanish, but those four exposures, eight times minimum hearing the word because you've got the example sentences, and for most of the words, an example sentence that uses the word elsewhere, they will have always happened now. I can't unsee those words because what's happened has happened. For you guys who didn't see the YouTube Shorts preview for this video, after you've watched this, go and watch that. You'll understand that reference I was just making, and also it's totally worth 40 seconds of your time. It's worth 80 seconds of your time. Watch it twice. It's 20 past 11, I've got some more coffee, I've got a water refill, I've got some chocolate, and I've got 540 cards to go, so we're going again.
This is sort of tied up with stuff I've already said, but another reason for doing this is that some of you may know I'm not the biggest fan of Anki, but I do acknowledge its effectiveness. Believe me, I'd much rather just watch movies in Spanish until April, which is when I'm hoping to go to Mexico, but I know perfectly well that in such a short time frame, it's more effective to do some deliberate study on top of lots of listening and reading. And honestly, it took me too long in life to learn that when there's something I don't like doing, but that I should do more of, the key is not to try to do more of it. For me, the key is to set aside a period of time in which I do nothing but that thing. I've previously admitted to being scared of Anki, but since that day, I'm pretty sure Anki's scared of me. Baba Yaga. There's this concept that I've become really interested in and I've started looking for as many ways to apply it to my life as possible. I call it resetting your normal. To give a very basic example, let's say you're a person who's getting up at 11 a.m. at the moment and you asked me what the easiest way to start getting up at 7 a.m. was. I would tell you that the easiest way is to agree with a friend that you're going to text them at 5 a.m. every day for the next month. Now, why 5 a.m. when you said 7 a.m.? It's because if you get up at 5 a.m. and text a friend to keep you accountable for a whole month, 7 a.m. will start feeling like a sleep-in. Everyone has different norms that they just accept as being their norms. At the moment, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. and most people consider that pretty early, but I've got a friend who's a high voltage train line maintenance worker guy and he's clocked in like an hour before I'm even getting up. You can totally see why he doesn't consider 5 a.m. to be early. A while ago I took a poll on how much time people spend on their language every day and I was surprised to see that the most common answer was 30 minutes or less. Anywhere up to one hour made up for two thirds of people. If that's you and you'd like it to be more, try finding one day in the next month where you could spend six hours in your target language. It might sound impossible but if you manage to do it just once, you'll start seeing two hours a day as very achievable. Speaking of achievable, I knew that this was going to take me well past dinner time and I hadn't quite had the 8 hours of sleep that I'd tried for the night before, so my afternoon session was structured around trying to induce a bit of a siesta. Okay, so I had a quick break and I wondered if I was ready for a sleep and then have a proper break and come back and do the last 340 after I've had like a good rest and a siesta. Uh, I'm not quite ready for a sleep though. I'm not, I know I'm just going to lie there thinking that I should be doing more of this. So I'm going to do a little bit more of this. I'm going to have a beer because I'm Australian and then go and have a sleep, come back refreshed and knock out like the last 300-ish cards. That's the plan anyway. There were a few things that I hadn't accounted for that would turn out to slow me down and at this stage it looked like covering all 1000 cards in the deck would take me well into the night. For example, after my first few unknown cards, I realized that the only chance I was going to have at genuinely passing the card when it came up again was if I put the example sentence on the front. If this were an exam, that would be regarded as cheating and with good reason because after I started doing this, I only had to fail two cards a second time. That is to say, in the whole deck, there were only two cards for which I couldn't remember the meaning after seeing it just once. So long as the second time I saw it, I also had the Spanish example sentence on the front to prompt me. I once remember my Swedish teacher, and at that time, essentially my language learning coach, William, telling me that the front of the card should have an example sentence, and I can now see why. In language acquisition, nothing is really cheating unless you're eliminating all of the cognitive processing. Because when you're trying to acquire a language, you're not seeing a question and knowing an answer, you're prompting yourself and letting your brain make a connection in preparation for when you have to do the same thing when you're listening to the language for real. This is normally called priming. When you put the example sentence on the front, yes, you greatly increase the chances that you'll remember what the word means, but only because you have an association to kickstart your thinking, not because you're being straight up told what the word is. I would even argue that although this way requires less memorization, it calls for more mental engagement than just flipping the card and failing it again. Nonetheless, adding an example sentence to the front of the card still took a little bit more time for all 800 cards or so that I did it to, which obviously adds up. So I think we can stop flirting around the whole 80s montage vibe that I've got going on here and let's just do it for real.
I know that people are still going to say, well, this is dumb. Like, even if you did want to learn a crazy number of words, this isn't the best way to go about it. But I've realized since the day that I did this that my Spanish learning circumstances are so different to most people's normal language learning that it's possible that this is a good idea for me whilst being a bad idea for almost everyone else. Firstly, I'm getting in like two to three, sometimes even four hours of Spanish a day, which is much more than most people hope to get in their language. So the frequency with which I see these words means that it's much more worthwhile for me to learn them even at this early stage. Like you can do a thought experiment of saying, okay, you will see this word once over the next three months. Is it worth spending a total of six minutes over the next couple of days to learn that word as opposed to getting six minutes of more basic input meant for someone of your level? Well, probably not, because if it's only going to come up once, then that's not going to help you very much. But if you say, well, that word's going to come up 10 times in the next three months, now is it worthwhile? Probably yes, because it'll make all the things around it more comprehensible because you know what one word means. And since I'm getting about five times as much input as a typical beginner gets, one word should theoretically come up five times as often, but I would dare say more because as the grade of input, like the level that it's meant for, increases, so does the complexity of vocabulary and just the number of words per minute. I guess what I'm saying is if you're only going to spend 20 minutes a day getting input from your target language for the next year, then don't bother learning a whole stack of vocabulary at the start because you'll probably just forget it all. But if you're going to spend five hours a day in the language for the next six months, then learning a massive stack of vocab right at the start of that isn't as dumb as it might seem on the surface of it. So my siesta didn't really go very well. I only got about maybe seven or eight minutes uh, of sleep. And then I just, I don't know, I just woke up. But I guess this is as fresh as I'm gonna be feeling. I had a shower. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm ready to tackle the last 228 cards, I think it was. They are going a lot more slowly now. The first kind of 400 went really quickly because I'd seen almost all of them before. Very few of them felt like actually new words. The last 200 or you know the last 300 have been much more difficult even before the words that I wasn't sure of the meaning of I felt like I had seen before but now I'm just seeing word after word that I haven't seen before so I think these last 228 are probably going to take almost as long as the first 700 or so which means I'll probably be up pretty late I might even need another sleep and then come back at like midnight or something because I'm doing this I am going to finish these 1000 words in this time Let's go. As the deck threw out more and more words that bore no resemblance to any language I speak, I started to increasingly rely on mnemonics, even with the example sentences on the front of the cards. There's another one. See, in Australia, students who finish year 12 get a thing called an ATAR, and I can think about that then like tying them to their university degree or their work or whatever it is they do. And even as the afternoon headed into the night, I was still reading every word that came up aloud, as well as most of the example sentences. I was trying to follow them as closely as I could. And it doesn't matter what school or philosophy of language learning you come from. It's hard to deny that doing this in the way that I did, like, reading the things aloud, reading each word and the example sentences, engaging with everything in this way, has to do something for my Spanish. Personally, I would argue that it did quite a lot. In fact, I'm not sure that I've ever made more progress in a language in a day than I did that day. Yeah, so it's just gone seven o'clock. I've just had some dinner. I'm feeling pretty fresh for the last ones, but there are 140 of them. Now, if that sounds a lot, it is. Like, that's 140 new ones, plus there'll be a bunch of reviews from all the ones that I've failed at some point today. We'll see how I go. I think I should be able to finish by 10 p.m. It feels somehow momentous to go into the last 100 or so. Watching back over this footage, I remember that in the final session, I actually got into one of the best flow states I've ever experienced, which I obviously had no idea about at the time because that's kind of the deal with a flow state. And even though this only happened for the last 140 cards or so, I'm still surprised that I was able to stay this focused throughout the day, let alone the final hour of what ended up being more than 10 hours of Anki cards. Es fumar. Es fumar. Después de la cena, 
cuando llegó el momento de pagar, todos se esfumaron. Esfumaron. To disappear, to despegar de, to blur, o to blur. Después de la cena, cuando llegó el momento de pagar, todos se esfumaron. So, that's it for the Refold 1K deck. I was done way sooner than I thought. That last session, I just smoked it through. I was not distracted. That was focus. I feel like a lot of those, actually, a lot of those words at the end that I got after even after one sighting, it wasn't just that I put the sample sentence on the front of the card. Some of them, I literally saw the word and was like, I remember that. And I did that for a lot of them. And like a lot of the last 100, which I would have thought were the hardest ones. I'm gonna go have a break. And then I'm going to try and find a deck. If I can find the right deck, I'll do this. I'll try and find a deck that's like the 1 to 5k deck. And if I can find it, I'm going to do like 50 more cards. I was looking for the extra words because having known the meanings of most of the first quarter of the deck, I still wanted to get as close as I could to actually learning a thousand words in a day. So I did find another deck to boost that number, but I was only able to get through 40 cards before stopping because I didn't like the setup of the deck or the audio, and I couldn't get that same flow that I'd had earlier. So the total number of unseen cards studied that day was 1,040, with a grand total of graded cards coming to 2,930 in just over 11 hours. Let's subtract the roughly 240 cards that I passed first go, and we can say that I studied 72 words an hour, which is exactly 50 seconds per word. That's a surprising amount of time given to each word in the context of such a ridiculous stunt. If you tinkered with the intervals a bit and you wanted to learn a still outrageous 400 new words a day, you could give yourself almost two minutes per word. It mightn't sound like much, but that would give you 15 seconds each for eight sightings of the word. I know if I did that, I'd remember quite a lot of those 400 words. It's now been a month since I did this and for most of those days I haven't revisited any of my reps because Christmas is not a great time to have 700 reps due, nor is New Year's, um, and nor is today. <laughs> I get that that is a flaw in this experiment. That That's not what it's about, okay? It's not about whether I've done my reps, it's about science. So having only reviewed a handful of the words I tried to learn in one day, I can already slowly make my way through an easier Spanish novel. I mean that I can do that with difficulty and most likely with misunderstandings that I'm unaware of, but as I record this, I've been learning Spanish for just under two months. To do that same thing in Swedish took me two years, and when I took a few different online Spanish vocab tests and then averaged out the results that they gave me, my vocabulary is supposedly massive. Of course, these numbers are are absurdly optimistic. Link's result especially of 33,000, you could knock a zero off that and maybe be in the ballpark. Like a very big ballpark. Like a... what's bigger than a ballpark? The Spanish speakers will know that they're getting this number because they're taking one word and saying that that's like 17 different words once you conjugate it with all the different subjects in all the different tenses. So then what is actually one word like beber, to drink, becomes about who knows how many different words that Link is counting it as and saying, I know all those words. Then there was also this test, which used a more accurate testing system. For one thing, it doesn't tell you whether you're right or wrong, which is kind of disconcerting when you're doing it, but it is the correct way to do tests like this. And it also went from Spanish to Spanish. So it asked for synonyms and antonyms to various Spanish words. And it was also quite long. I mean, I don't remember exactly how many questions there were, but there were a lot. It felt like a lot. It felt quite intensive to do. But even it was able to be tricked by a bit of deduction because at the end, it told me that I had the vocabulary of a native Spanish speaker who was 14 years old. There's a lot I could say about that, but the main thing that I should say about it is that it's clearly untrue. I've no. But still, even scoring well on these tests using deduction does require some knowledge of Spanish in order to work, and I know for sure that that number would have come out a lot lower if I'd never done an entire day of Anki. When I reviewed the deck just yesterday, I looked at about 200 cards and was able to work out the meaning of all of them. Yes, all of them. But remember that I still had the sample sentences on the front, and I've since had about 80 hours of Spanish input. I felt that even without the sentences, I would have been able to 
to take a good guess at a lot more than half of their meanings. Let's say that there were 760 words that were truly new to me in the deck, and let's be harsh and say that I would only correctly recall half of their meanings without sentences, that's still 380 words. Even if I'd only acquired 380 words over a month thanks to this one day of study, that's almost 13 words a day. I dare say in reality, it'd be a bit more than that. If I doubled my immersion time, it would probably be closer to 30. Whatever the case, it's a lot of words, and if you're thinking, yeah, but who wants to do a whole day of Anki? But yeah, this was actually a lot more fun than I thought, and it sort of goes to prove my point that doing things that you think might not you might not like or that you think might be really hard is primarily about the way you frame them and the environment you set up for them. For example, today I was just trying to make a video where I did a thousand Anki words in one day, and that made it fun. I should add that of course most people don't have the time to do stuff like this, and on any normal day nor would I, but from now on, instead of just buckling down and trying to work harder, you might want to ask yourself if you can turn it into a challenge that's a bit more fun. I also just want to add a quick shout out to Ben from Refold, he works for Refold. Just today he gave me a hand optimizing my Anki setup for good sentence mining and immersion time, so that hopefully from here I can actually get decent at Spanish, and also a shout out to you for watching so far through this very long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go have some good days.